Hi everyone, welcome to Difference Frames the World, a channel to see the world differently. Today we talk about the death of Shinzo Abe again, discussing some topics not covered in the two videos we published several days ago. On July 8, 2022, two gunshots from a handmade gun killed Shinzo Abe, the former Japanese Prime Minister, when delivering a speech for the LDP to win more seats in the Senate election. On July 12, 2022, the world saw him off, with thousands of politicians from all over the world showing their sympathy. The US flew its flags at half-staff, and Tsai Ing-wen followed suit immediately. Not only did the DPP government show its condolence to the former Japanese Prime Minister with such a demeanor, but the Kuomintang leader, Zhu Lailun, also showed his agreement with Tsai Ing-wen's decision. We mentioned in a video before that the Kuomintang is no better than the DPP authorities, and even if it takes over the DPP in the coming election, it is not likely for Beijing to have a peaceful reunification with Taiwan. Shinzo Abe planned to visit Taiwan at the end of July 2022, and he could never make it. However, several Japanese politicians, who had planned to accompany him to the island, wanted to visit Taiwan on his behalf. There are still some people in Taiwan who are more in favor of Japan than China mainland, and Shinzo Abe constantly wanted to get involved in Taiwan's self-defense when he was still alive. Since the Biden administration came into power in January 2021, the US and Japan have conspired to provoke Beijing on the Taiwan issue. The US House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, is reportedly planning to visit Taiwan in August to continue her delayed trip because of COVID in April 2022. The US and Japan wanted to keep Taiwan on fire with Shinzo Abe's planned visit to the island, but the former Prime Minister's sudden death disrupted the schedule. Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan seems to be Plan B. The Chinese side has shown its concern and protested vehemently against the US. It is least likely that Nancy Pelosi will acquire the COVID virus again, and her trip to Taiwan will trigger a confrontation between Beijing and Washington. That lady has lived long enough, far beyond America's expected lifespan. Still, she looks energetic, and it seems she can create more trouble across the Taiwan Strait. We will see if the Chinese side will take action to stop her flight from landing in Taiwan if no Americans can stop her. Let us continue with the murdered former Japanese Prime Minister, Shinzo Abe, Japan's longest-serving Prime Minister, who resigned for health reasons two years ago. International public opinion has commented that Abe had left several phenomenal marks in the history of Japanese politics, such as advancing the conservative agenda of restoring Japan's economy, strengthening the military, and boosting Japan's national pride. However, his conservative stance and strong personal imprint also angered neighboring nations in Asia, particularly China and South Korea. He was a mixture of two extremes. His grandfather, Ken Arbe, was a member of the House of Representatives opposing the invasion of China, and his maternal grandfather, Nobusuk Kishi, was a war criminal. It is worth mentioning that he seldom mentioned his grandfather, Ken Arbe, but he was proud of Nobusuk Kishi, who was detained by the U.S. Army for three years after the war. Nobusuk Kishi was set free, despite his crime related to the notorious Unit 731. As the U.S. wanted to use him against the leftist, he became the Japanese Prime Minister. Nobusuk Kishi's brother, Isaac Asato, Shinzo Abe's maternal granduncle, also became Japan's Prime Minister. Shinzo Abe's father, Shintaro Abe, served in important positions such as chief cabinet secretary and foreign minister and might have also become Japan's prime minister. However, his father died prematurely. Such a background determined Arbe's conservative political stance. He was particularly fond of his maternal grandfather, Nobusuk Kishi, a conservative politician who wanted to revise the peace constitution that shackled the development of Japan's military power. In his political career, Shinzo Abe's primary goal was also to amend the constitution and end the post-war system, which his maternal grandfather had pursued. In September 2006, Abe was elected president of the Liberal Democratic Party and became the Prime Minister of Japan, reaching the first peak of his political career. During his first term, he took an essential step in unbundling Japan's military. At the same time, he tried to mend the relations with neighboring countries. He adopted a more practical stance. His first term was short. 
As scandals continued to emerge among cabinet members and senior LDP officials, Shinzo Abe's approval rating plummeted. In September 2007, he announced his resignation on the grounds of health problems. The resignation almost ended his political life. Still, he was the leader of the most influential faction of the Liberal Democratic Party. Five years later, he became the Japanese Prime Minister again and kept the position for three consecutive terms. Shinzo Abe was the most influential Prime Minister in Japan after World War II, famous for his Abe economics, which was the Japanese version of printing money. Whether one loves or hates him, he was a great leader for Japan, and undoubtedly he loved Japan. As a result, he was very popular in Japan and Western nations. After his death, the Western nations wanted to glorify him as a world leader. India had one day to memorize him, and in Brazil, three days. Western media have elevated Shinzo Abe to a position as a holy figure, claiming Japan has become the epitome of peace and stability, and attributed that to Shinzo Abe's efforts. The reality is Shinzo Abe was a representative of ultranationalists, who had denied Japan's invasion of China and the Nanjing massacre entirely. Japan has nothing to do with the so-called peace and stability, but is a country with a history of political violence. In the past centuries, Japan has been trying to take over China like the Mongols and Manchus who established Yuan and Qing dynasties. Tens of millions of Chinese died because of Japan's atrocities. Japan also committed crimes in many other Asian nations, and it should have killed millions of American soldiers if the US did not drop two atomic bombs. However, the country never apologized for its wrongdoings in the last century, and Shinzo Abe was a representative of conservative forces who did not admit Japan had invaded China and other nations. Moreover, Japan revised its textbooks, saying Japan entered China like visiting a neighbor instead of invading it and killing millions. During Shinzo Abe's terms, Japan showed extreme obedience to the Americans, hoping the United States would allow Japan to obtain the right to engage in war, lifting the ban on collective self-defense so that it could become a normal country. Even though Japan regards itself as a Western country, no Western powers take it seriously. At G7 summits, Japanese leaders always hide their faces behind other leaders' backs. The reason is straightforward. Japan is not an independent country, and the U.S. military bases decide its status as a U.S. colony. Shinzo Abe tried to change it, but he did not make it. His death was a surprise to Western media. And they used his assassination as a tool to contain China. The Washington Post published an article titled, The U.S. Should Support Japan's Move to Normalize Its Military. The article not only boasts about the so-called Abe economics but also mentions Japan's contributions under the umbrella of the U.S. Indo-Pacific strategy when Abe was in power. In addition, according to the U.S. foreign policy website, Abe feels very strongly that Japan cannot live in an Asia dominated by China. Abe has helped persuade a silent Japanese public to take a tougher stance on the rise of China, increase defense spending, strengthen Japan's military, and laid the groundwork for a four-party security dialogue mechanism. Some U.S. politicians want to militarize Japan to counterbalance China's rising power, and Arbe's death is perfect for Japan to get the world's sympathy when it wants to become a normal country. China's so-called threat becomes an excellent excuse to set Japan's militarism free from Pandora's box. Shinzo Abe died, and we should let him rest in peace. However, it is a shame for the Western media to explore Shinzo Abe's residual value after his death to fulfill their hidden agendas. The world will see the revision of Japan's post-war constitution very soon because of Abe's unexpected death. The country may even become Asia's Ukraine if some country wants to contain China with the same playbook dealing with Russia. It demands Japanese politicians' wisdom to avoid such a tragedy, as Shinzo Abe wanted to normalize Japan as a world power, not a puppet succumbing to a superpower forever. He was first a patriotic Japanese, then a great national leader. Also, he was an ordinary national leader, and under America's strict control, he could not make many contributions to Japan's development. After the COVID pandemic, Japan was deeply affected, and the so-called Abe economics turned out to be nothing but a bubble, a money-printing game. By setting up inflation targets and creating an expectation of price increases, 
the Japanese people are forced to buy things before they become more expensive, thus boosting consumption. After implementing such a policy, ordinary Japanese people are more wretched than before, and the rich become wealthier.